A few of you asked about number 37 from 7.4, and you should have, I agree. It's the hardest problem in the section, and it's not a partial fractions problem, or at least I did not use partial fractions on it, nor could I find a way to use partial fractions on it. So it seems to be in a hard problem in the wrong section. Uh, but in case you're curious, uh, let's go through it anyway. Um, if you're not curious, it's okay. Like I said, it's not a partial fractions problem, so you can probably just safely skip this. But um, since you've spent some time on 37, let's make sure that we know what's going on here. Um, so the way that I tackled it was completing the square on the bottom, uh, since I couldn't factor that. Uh, so I broke the x squared plus 2x plus 4 apart into plus 1 and plus 3, and that does mean that this part right here factors. That's a completed square. Um, I know it's going to factor into x plus 1, so I'm, I'm doing that same breaking apart on the top. I'm just breaking apart that x, or rewriting the x minus 3 as x plus 1 uh, minus 4. That is algebraically equivalent. Uh, so let's see if we can rewrite this integral now. And say the, uh, oops, I left the squared off. Um, and say the bottom will be x plus 1 squared plus 3. All of that's still squared. And on the top, I'll have x plus 1 minus 4. And I'm actually going to break this apart into two separate integrals. Uh, you know when you've got a denominator, you can break it apart into separate numerators. So let's separate this into x plus 1. And we do need the entire denominator. So x plus 1 over x plus 1 squared plus 3. All of that squared. Um, so there's one integral. And then we're also going to need to do plus integral minus 4 over x plus 1 quantity squared plus 3 entire quantity squared dx. Let's tackle this one on the left first. Uh, it looks like it might be a good candidate just for a good old-fashioned u substitution. Uh, so let's try that. And maybe this is not an obvious u substitution either, but let's let's try that for u, uh, which would make du. Uh, we need a little chain rule here. It would make du du. 2 times x plus 1, the 3 goes away, uh, dx. And more importantly for us, 1 half du uh, is x plus 1 dx. And this one's actually now pretty good shape to do a u substitution on. Uh, the bottom is u squared. The top one half or x plus one dx is the same thing as one half du. This leaves one there, um, and that integral is actually really easy to do now. This is um, u to the negative two. So after integrating uh, negative one half u to the negative one, and u gets replaced with this stuff. So this half becomes negative one half parentheses x plus one squared plus three, um, all that to the negative one. And we are done with half of the integral. For the second one, I tried a little u substitution also, and it turned out to ha not be the final answer, but it helped a little bit. So um, on this one, I tried uh, just use x plus 1. And that makes 
du dx, and then when I rewrote the integral, then it looked like e squared plus three quantity squared. Uh, still have the negative four, maybe I'll move that out front. Negative four, uh, make this a one. And then dx and du are exactly the same thing. Uh, so this becomes du. Um, and that doesn't give you something that's integrable right away. But hopefully now you do recognize how to integrate that from the previous section. This thing looks pretty similar to some trig substitution integrals that we did in 7.3. Uh, so here's where you remind yourself, you go back to 7.3 and you say, okay, what exactly is it for u squared plus 3 or x squared plus 3? Um, and that turns out to be a tangent substitution. So we can replace u, uh, let's get purple, replace u. with square root of three tangent theta, which will make du into square root of three secant so squared theta, d theta. I'll make those substitutions. Uh, and I'm going to try to condense steps here a little bit, but uh, the u squared on the bottom would become 3 tangent squared. So we'll have 3 tangent squared plus 3. Uh, factor the 3 out. So we'll have 3 tangent squared plus 1, which is the same thing as secant squared. And that whole thing is squared. Um, on the top, du is the same thing as square root of 3 secant squared. d theta. I know it's looking worse, but I promise it's going to get better. Uh, so let's factor some constants out. Uh, the square root of 3 can come out on the bottom we've got 3 but it's inside the squared parentheses so it's really 9 and what's left inside the integral secant squared on top secant to the fourth on the bottom so those two secants on the top cancel two of the secants on the bottom And we're getting something that's starting to look doable. We've got this kind of ugly constant out here. Beautiful in its own way. And uh, 1 over secant, keep mind is cosine. And at this point, you may have begun to memorize the integral, oops, integral, <laughs> the integral of cosine squared. You might have started to memorize that as a formula. Uh, if you haven't done that, that's okay. It's not necessarily one that we need to have memorized uh, because you can also sort of just remember the process of how to integrate that. Uh, you replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. And from there, you remind yourself that sine squared is the same thing as uh, 1 minus cosine 2 theta all over 2.
And we're finally, essentially, to the point where we can do all this integration. Uh, this is a d theta integral. Actually, let me take one more step. So let's factor that one half out. Okay, so this is an integral in terms of theta. So we can integrate with respect to theta. We'll get one integrates to theta minus one half. Uh, one integrates to theta again. And cosine two theta integrates to one half sine two theta. Um, and I am running out of room here. I do want to remind you that when you do one of these substitutions, trig identity, or trig uh, substitutions, uh, we right there probably should have drawn the triangle. I kind of left that step off. Um, and we said tangent of theta. u over square root of 3, so that would be opposite and adjacent, and then the uh, remaining side there will become uh, square root of u squared plus 3, uh, which will allow us to rewrite uh, some of these things. Uh, theta will just have to be inverse tangent of u over square root of 3. Keep in mind u is also x plus 1, so we have multiple layers of back substitution to do here. Uh, and I'm kind of out of room, and I think we're more or less done with the integral aside from, like I said, replacing some thetas with u's based on this triangle, and then replacing all the u's with x plus 1's. Um, and that will get you there. So aren't you so glad you asked? And again, I'm not sure why this is in 7.4, because there's no partial fractions involved.